In Tableau 24.1, there's a new feature that allows you to use the buffer function on line string geometry objects inside of Tableau Desktop. There's also a bit of a non-story to this feature, so as ever, let's get stuck in. So the non-story here is that this feature doesn't actually appear anywhere in the product marketing. If you go to the Tableau features release page and you go to Tableau Desktop or Tableau Web Authoring, you can just go ahead and filter this over here. Uh, select Tableau Desktop as an example. You won't see this being mentioned here. But when Tableau 24.1 came out, I saw a post by Mark Reed, and Mark always does a fantastic job. If you want to learn everything there is to know about spatial capabilities inside of Tableau, Mark Reed's blog and Mark Reed's video channel is the place to go, YouTube channel even. Uh, and he posted this little feature, and I thought, oh, this is interesting. I thought the buffer function already existed, and it does. The buffer function previously was able to do this specifically with the data points. So in essence, what we're talking about are geometry uh, points rather than geometry line strings and polygons, right? So in this specific case, what this feature actually is, is an enhancement. And I've made a big deal about the fact that a lot of features in Tableau in the past have just been enhancements, not really features. And it's kind of interesting because on this particular case, Tableau themselves acknowledge this as an enhancement. So if you go to the Tableau release navigator, it says that for 24.1, this specific enhancement is actually just an update to the existing capabilities. It wasn't possible to do this before. Now it is possible. So is this an enhancement or a new feature? You tell me. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, uh, the feature is here, and I'm going to show you how to use this with a specific data set for the London Marathon. If I go over to my file system here, you'll see that I have a shape file. What I did is I actually downloaded the London Marathon route as a GPX file. The GPX file is essentially what's created when you do a run on your smartwatch or any sports tracking watch. And I turned it into a shape file using website. You could probably do the same thing with your own GPS trace. Having done that, I downloaded that onto my computer and you can see that these are the base files here. Now, a shapefile is kind of interesting because you actually need all the constituent parts, but the actual file that we connect to is this one, the .shp file. I'll put a link to these files so you can follow along in this video if you want to. And I'll also publish this visualization that I'm going to build on Tableau Public as well. So let's go ahead and head to Tableau Desktop where we can actually start working with this. So to do this, we're going to hit on this spatial data type here when we go and connect to a file. This actually is something you can do on Tableau Public as well. Absolutely fine. We'll go ahead to my uh, desktop here and we'll go ahead to the London Marathon page. You can see here that we have the shape file. Let's go ahead and select that straight away. And once we've done that, you'll see that we connect to it here. Now, I'm just going to move my face up to the right because what I want to highlight to you is that this geometry is indeed a line string. So to show you that, we have to go and look for the geometry column in our data set. The way shapefiles work means that the geometry column actually carries a lot more information than just uh, one row of data. But you can see here just on the right hand side that it is actually a geometry on the far right hand side. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Now we can go ahead and use this inside of Tableau. We'll go ahead and click on sheet one. If you're wondering where that is, that's on the bottom left here. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now we're ready to visualize our chart. Now this function is super easy to use. I've actually done a video on this function already. If we go ahead and double click the geometry, you'll see that it draws the geometry straight away. Let's put my face down here so it's out of the way. Let's hide the show me function on the right. And you can see that it's already there. It's dead easy. That's almost all we need to do. Now, to make this map a little bit nicer, just going to spend a little bit of time formatting this. So uh, I can never remember if it's background layers or map options, but I think it's background layers. Yes, that's the one. We can go ahead and choose something a little bit nicer. Let's choose streets. It gives us a much richer, nicer chart. We can actually make this a little bit more interesting. Let's see if I can dial up the size of this path as well just to make it a little bit brighter and because this is a root let's make it red let's make it a really rich red and make it stand out compared to the chart and then what we can do is we can wash out the map a little bit more just so that it's a little bit more obvious so there we go we've done some formatting we've made this look nicer now we can actually get back to the agenda which is to do the buffer function so to do this I'm just going to go ahead to the top right here and I'm going to create a calculated field you don't have to do that you could do it another way but this is the way I like to do it and here you can see we've got this calculation window that's modal. Modal just means that it's floating. So we can go ahead and uh, sort of go ahead to start typing the function. So if you're new to functions in Tableau, go ahead and check out my functions playlist. I have over 30 videos on functions there. But we just go ahead and type buffer and you'll see that Tableau gives us a hint for the function. And it immediately shows us how to use that function. It wants the geometry. 
then it wants the number, then it wants the units. And what a buffer does is it draws a boundary around the object. So the units are going to be distances, meters, feet, or kilometers. You can use other uh, factors as well, miles as an example. So for this one, the geometry we want is actually called geometry. We can see that that's this field right here. So let's go ahead and just go back in here and just type geometry. You'll see the autocomplete comes up, geometry selected. Then we can hit a comma. We're going to want to add 100 meters to this geometry. So I want to create a 100 meter boundary around the London Marathon route for the purpose of maybe creating zones that are going to be used for specific activities around the event. So let's go ahead and type 100. We'll then go ahead and type M. And to do this, M on its own is not enough. You have to put this in speech marks. So we'll go ahead and delete that and just type in M. And now that's actually ready, you'll see that Tableau tells us that this function is correct. It tells us down here that the calculation is valid. We're now ready to go ahead and use this. And we'll call this 100 meter zone. So let's call this zone. And we'll hit apply. We'll hit OK. Now, I'm actually going to duplicate this straight away, and I'm just going to go create another zone because the great thing about this is you can you can actually do a couple of things with it. We'll create a five 500 meter zone. Uh, that's about right. And we'll call this as such. So we'll see Tableau complain that I'm using the same name. And then we'll go ahead and change that to five. And now it's absolutely fine. And then we'll do a kilometer zone. That's the last one that we'll do. So we're going to stack all three of these geometries on top of each other to create a sort of layered visualization of zones around the particular specific route. This is super handy. And um, one of the things you can do, of course, is you can sort of merge this with other functions inside of the spatial capabilities in Tableau. So we'll go ahead and hit apply, hit OK. And now we've got the different zones. I didn't actually name that uh, zone. So let's go ahead and just rename that in here. So we're Go ahead and type zone. Perfect. Now what we can do is we can start dragging those zones onto the map. So let's go ahead and drag a 100 meter zone and you'll see that a zone appears around the map. We can of course go and change the color so we can make it yellow. Let's do that as an example. You can see that it's right there. Now here's a critical thing. Because we're using the map layers capability in Tableau, you'll see that the geometry zone we started with is at the bottom and the 100 meter zone here is at the top. And if we want to layer these so that the uh, layering actually works, what we want to do is actually change the order of this around. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the other zones that we need here onto the chart. Then we'll reorganize things in the way that makes sense. You'll see what I mean in a very brief moment. So let's go ahead and drag 500 meter zone onto the chart. You'll see that layers in and then let's go ahead and drag a kilometer on top. And so what you can see here is that we've actually got the zones quite clearly laid out here and it almost sort of going in descending order. So it actually should be the other way around. What we actually want is to go in this direction over here. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and drag it and you can see that I'm dragging it up and down the marks pane. Geometry goes to the top, the red line comes through. Now that's starting to work nicely. Let's go ahead and put the 100 meter one next then the 500 meter one. Now you can kind of start to see these layers working. The next thing we probably need to do is to sort of make the formatting a little bit nicer because it's absolutely awful right now. And so what we do as we go further out, we'll make the zones probably less interesting, just so that it's super clear. And there you go. We've kind of got this really strange layered effect going on. Now, what you can do is you can start to wash out specific details. So if you don't want them to be sort of so overbearing, you can go into the color, change, uh, play around with the sort of different uh, markings, and then go ahead and uh, just apply the formatting that you want. Just really, really dial this in. Now, don't forget that once you've done this, you can, of course, play around with this with parameters and actions. And so you can make this a truly interactive sort of uh, capability that you're working with. So here we have the route. And now as we use this map, if I just zoom into specific parts of London, we can use this to start to identify areas visually here on the map that we maybe need to be prepared to do specific types of activities. And we can just quickly use this now. There is a little bit of you know, theory here in that these uh, zones, these distances are not exactly pinpoint accurate. There's a little bit of maths going on behind the background, which means that you have to sort of factor that in. But over this kind of distance, it's perfectly fine and you're not going to get any distortion um, that's going on. So that's it. That's pretty much the feature in a nutshell. And we've gone a bit further, showed you a few more other capabilities around mapping. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit subscribe, hit like. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. We've hit 100,000 subscribers. That is absolutely incredible. But, you know, a lot of people who watch the channel are still unsubscribed. So keep hitting that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one.